Hello everyone, we're gonna continue our guide on parallel quests, and next we're gonna look at the miscellaneous skills in the game, both the supers and the ultimates. And that includes the unique dual ultimate that falls into the miscellaneous category. So, yeah, let's begin. Alright, the first few are some defensive moves. There's Super Raptor Image. I'll show off how it works. You can teleport around, and you actually uh, use it to get behind your opponent. Like you can see here, I can keep z dashing around until I pass him. You can use it in place of a uh, vanish, and it will put you behind them just the same way. And it comes out faster if you use it that way. Show off another one. Here's Super Guard. This will drain your key to use it, but it will render you invulnerable to all forms of damage. They can't even grab you out of it. The other uh, defensive ability I'll show off is Backflip. You'll turn to face the opponent usually, and even if you don't, you'll do a backflip that can be used to avoid attacks. You can also input the input again to do a longer backflip. Here you see I just dodged his grab by doing a backflip. Got away from his back hit using it. Get behind him with Super After Image. And again, Super After Image only costs a single key bar as opposed to two stamina. So if you can use it as an alternative to vanishing, which costs uh, 200 stamina to vanish, this one's useful if you need healing, is Energy Zone. You use it on a knock but down or whatever, and when you cast it, your character will heal their health. If you have allies, they'll also be healed by it. But I'll show off uh, another skill that's also really good for healing in this part. Yeah, I'll show it off. This one's the dual ultimate that, that gives you the best healing. And you use it, and then if your partner gets it before it's interrupted, now watch my health and watch Sugar's health. Duel, the savior has come, will heal you and your partner at the same time. Probably the best healing skill in the game. The only drawback to it is you do have to have a partner to use it. This time I used an after image. This one's kind of like the a super after image. Except you have to use it to defend against an attack. You'll strike this pose for a moment, but when you do it, if an enemy hits you, whether it's with an attack or a key blast, you'll disappear and then you can move around. And you can move to any position you want and counterattack. Show off another uh, useful ability is Solar Flare. When the enemy is in front of you or does a vanish, you can use Solar Flare to uh, stun them and put them in another combo. I did equip Burst Charge, I equipped it here. Yeah, this is the best charge skill for PQs, mostly because it's quick and will give you a couple of quick key bars. You can see I stopped Piccolo with the Solar Flare there. I need another one to get Tien off me. There's a couple other uh, pretty useful support uh, moves you can use in the miscellaneous tree. I'll show off one of them real quick. If you do a knockback hit and then do Audacious Laugh, you'll put the slowing debuff on your opponent. It can help with a few of the more trickier enemies. Like it'll make their movement slower, their bursts and stuff and will still be the same speed, but it can make them a little easier to outmaneuver. With these Earth is in your hand super soul, you can use Hero's Flute, which is a miscellaneous uh, super, and it will protect you with this barrier. At the same time, it will heal your allies, albeit rather slowly. And then another direct way of healing your allies is present for you. It's a little hard to get them with it sometimes in the thick of the heavy fighting, but if an opponent, if an ally is sitting still, you can usually get him with that. And that little healing uh, will come out of the present. Though sometimes uh, Jack in the Box will pop out of the present instead, and that will harm uh, both your allies and your opponents. The, the other drawback of this move, though, is that you can easily uh, accidentally heal your opponents with it. 
And there's one other uh, miscellaneous move that is also pretty good and I'd recommend for PQs, but it is exclusive to Majin's and to the purification form of Majin's. It's called Quick Sleep. Now outside of purification, you'll only recover health, but with quick sleep and purification form, you recover health, key, and stamina, so it becomes a lot more powerful that way. I'll talk more about the Awoken skills in a future video. We'll talk about each of them as well as how they work. Since this l video is kind of short given the uh, lack of uh, miscellaneous moves to use, I'll throw power-ups into the mix as well. We'll talk about some of the uh, better, some of the better power-ups. I believe this one, Fighting Pose H, will reduce the amount of damage you take. Is Fighting Pose K, and you'll see I have super armor with Fighting Pose K. The opponent will have a harder time knocking you away. They can still grab you, and certain skills will still work on you, but. The armor will protect you from most attacks that the, the CPU might try to perform. It's quick to pull off, and you can extend it with some skills, like, uh... What's it called? Like, Lovely Cyclone can extend the uh, effect of Fighting Pose K. Fighting Pose F is similar. You can see, it's, instead of damaging my health, it's damaging my stamina whenever I take a hit. They can't grab you in this state either, though they can break your stamina fairly easily if they manage to land a hit on you. Like if they use a burst dash that goes behind you or anything, it's kind of like being in a permanent I'm firing an ultimate state, so any attacks that would not damage you or affect you in an ultimate state, like grabs and such, will not affect you while you're under the effects of Fighting Pose F. You just gotta watch out for when they do this, because they'll break your stamina immediately, and then you'll be in trouble. I mean, obviously this is just the training partner, and this is the hardest they get to fight. So, yeah. But you saw how I lost my uh, stamina to the burst dash. The best way to do it is to use that little vanish move to try to avoid getting hit. Because if I hit you with a move, it'll break your stamina. It'll break your stamina instantly. But as you can see, I can't be grabbed. Punching me won't stop me from doing it. It's kind of like a advanced super armor of sorts. That Look at a few more power-ups next. The first one will be Fighting Sun. It's quick to go off, and you can't use any skills while under its effect, but all your stats are increased. Your basic strikes will do more damage. You'll get more key back when you land hits, you're faster, and you take less damage. Next is Fruit of the Tree of Might. If you hold the, if you keep hitting the button, you'll do this teleport punch after you eat the fruit, and it will also give you a boost to your damage. Alright, for this demonstration, I'll just do the uh, heavy kick combo. You'll see it did 3,070... 3,772 3, damage. Next, I'll eat the fruit of the tree of might. Okay, I got it right. 4,132 damage when affected by the fruit of the tree of might, so it boosts the damage you deal with your attacks. It also lasts quite a bit. This might even be a good way to extend other uh, boosts like... Uh, like meditation and such, because eating the fruit, you can't be uh, knocked out of it unless they use a burst dash. I'll demonstrate that real quick. I'm gonna have Blaze attack me. We'll go normal. You can see she's now fighting me. I'll use the fruit of the tree of might. You'll see you have armor while using it, and then you can also do the teleport punch to stun them and set them up for a combo. And the Fruit of the Tree of Might does last for quite a bit, so if you wanted to, you can use this as a as a power-up extension, similar to similar to the way Lovely Cyclone does. Okay, we'll go on to the next one, which is Do or Die. Do or Die gives you a boost to your defense. I'm gonna go ahead and let her hit me, but. You'll see it uh, actually makes you take less damage. 
So that combo with Blaze, which, who has a 125 in basic strikes, should have knocked me out of green health, and it didn't. All right, the next uh, power-up we'll talk about is Divinity Unleashed. You can see I can use Fighting Sun for free as well. So Divinity Unleashed, you'll charge key. When you hear your character chuckle, you can release it, and you'll get a you'll get that power-up indicator. Now all of your hits give you increased key regen. You get increased key for every strike you get. So it's a real quick way to build up your bar. You'll also, it also works the same way. If your opponent's hitting you, you'll get more key back than you would without the buff. Alright, the last couple of power-up skills that we'll talk about are Data Input, Meditation, and Formation. So Data Input will give you an ability to auto-dodge whenever the opponent is attacking you with basic attacks as long as you're sitting still. I'll show a demonstration. I'm not touching the controls, but I'm auto-dodging all of Blaze's punches here. This will also auto-dodge any burst dash attack, but not any grabs and not any key blasts, like basic key blasts. It also won't block any... it also won't dodge any uh, supers or ultimates. But as I mentioned before, you can extend it. I'm gonna extend it using the Fruit of the Tree of Might. Land that hit. Then I'll let Blaze attack me, and I still keep the effect of the auto-dodge. And it'll last longer, because Fruit of the Tree of Might has a longer duration. Well, after auto-dodging, you can attack your opponent once they're vulnerable. You can see I dodged your dynamite kick there, so it can block uh, some strike su- It can dodge some strike supers. Anyways, I'll show off the other ones. I'm gonna switch Blaze's fighting to off. There we go. But she's still going, even though she should have stopped. Yeah, the next one is a uh, one that ha was so good it had to be nerfed. Is meditation. When you meditate, it takes a little longer to activate it now. And when you get it, you'll gain ten bars of key, which is a thousand. That's the amount necessary to perform the power rush. And I, but I showed you in the previous video about strike ultimates how to use power rush for free with allies and what it will do is on top of giving you a thousand key as your maximum it will also temporarily increase the amount of key you regen and get from striking your opponents. So the last one is formation. It's a little slower of a buff, but if you pull it off, it will stack up to three times, gives you three bars of key, and will heavily increase your your damage output with uh, supers and ultimates. And I believe you can also extend it using the Fruit of the Tree of Might. Alright, let's give this a try. I'm going to use uh, Thunder Flash on Blaze and see how much damage it does if I just uh, fire it without using all six bars. We got 9,207. And again, that's only with three bars of Thunder Flash. Now I'll use Formation. And then we'll use Thunder Flash again. Again, only three bars. It did 11,508 damage, so it's a pretty significant boost. Now, to extend Formation, I'll use the Fruit of the Tree of Might. And then we'll do it again. 11,508. But it also gives me the, the, the normal damage boost of the Fruit of the Tree of Might. So yeah, most, most people like to use Lovely Cyclone or Meditation to boost the extension time on power-up skills, but if you ask me, the best one for that is Fruit of the Tree of Might. You get armored up, you can attack the enemy after you powering up, and it will maintain all your other buffs. With this kind of power, I want to see what kind of damage I could do with all six bars of Thunder Flash. So let's give it a try. Nineteen thousand six hundred ninety-six. That's pretty good, especially considering I don't have an Awoken skill currently active. Like if you used that kind of thing with uh, Super Saiyan Blue or Super Vegeta Two, you'd do even more damage than that. 
And yeah, you could probably turn it into a one-hit kill kind of move. And with that, we've covered pretty much every super and ultimate in the game. And there's still one more category left to go through, and that's the evasive skills. Though, it probably won't take me too long to get through those. Uh, in fact, I probably might even do them in this video. Now, a lot of stamina... A lot of uh, evasive moves got their stamina costs reduced, which is good. But one that still costs uh, 300 stamina to use, and is still pretty good, is Angry Shout. You don't really use it to do damage or set up the opponent for a combo, but what it will do is it will protect you from all forms of damage, plus it will gain you a bar of key when you use it. I mean, the comms obviously won't care too much about it. They'll usually uh, try to attack you after the shout when you might be vulnerable. And yeah, it is costly because it's one of the few that retained the uh, 300 stamina requirement. But if you just need to build key on your character, the Angry Shout is uh, one to consider. So for PQs, this is the best one, is Dragon Burn. After you land a Dragon Burn, you can land a stamina break and then set it up for your combo. You can see I turned that evasive into a fairly decent combo. If I'd fired Prominence Flash earlier, I even would have hit Cabo with it. Yeah, you can use it to catch the opponent into a stun state. And rarely, if ever, will a Calm actually try to escape that state by vanishing or evading. They can do it, so can players, but the comms usually don't try to. So you can use this instead of vanishing, and you can turn what otherwise would just be a struggle to regain the uh, momentum, and just retake the momentum immediately. See if I can get a better example of this. Like, he's bursting in, I'll evasive to burn him, hit him, knock him back, and go for prominence flash. I just turned his burst dash against him and took him out with an ultimate. Yeah, when it comes to evasive skills, most of them do the exact same thing. They'll knock the opponent away from you, or stagger them, or knock them up into the air. I know a fake blast can put him into a stun state similar to hitting them with solar flare, but the, uh, the wind-up time on that one's so slow that you'd probably really only be able to set up a basic combo. But with Dragon Burn, like I demonstrated, you can hit the enemy with a stamina break right after burning them, and then go right into an ult knock back into a Key Blast ultimate if you wanted, or into a basic combo into a Strike ultimate, or anything you want, really. So, yeah, that'll cover all of the uh, miscellaneous skills, power-ups, and evasives in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, and how to best use them against uh, the Parallel Quest opponents. I think in the next part we'll take a look at some Super Souls, as well as which ones would be the best ones to bring, and how to best utilize them. Plus we'll talk about the AI and their behavior in Parallel Quests, and how you can turn it against them to your advantage. So thank you again for watching this, and I'll see you for the next video.